Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red. We are in Lavender Town now. Going south of it, now that we have Surf, we can do things on Route 12. Happiness. How's it taste when you're going upstairs? I don't know. My Pokemon's ashes are stored in Pokemon Tower. She doesn't need this TM anymore. Jeez, it's sad. It's a move called Return. I don't remember what that does exactly, but I have seen it in action before, I think, in Pokemon Stadium and stuff. Hey, crud. I got a bite here. I got a bite here and you're over my shoulder. What you doing, boy? Goldeen, Ned. Did you know Ned, spelled backwards, is den? Which sometimes fireplaces exist in dens, and that's a good time. Chomp the... Goldine and Poliwag. Oh, I didn't do that part of the music yet. But yeah, we're rolling with Jolteon at level 52. We rare candied some of the party, man. We got a whole thing. Pin Missile, Thunder, Thunderbolt. Jolteon is a beast. But I got a little bit of a confession that you may not have figured out just yet because I'm crafty that way. Will Bill change Pokemon? I don't know, will he? Apparently not. This is false commentary, that's my secret. This time, because uh, I got lost. This is a hard part of the game. So, uh, we're watching back the edited footage and talking over top of it. Because it was like 40-something minutes long, the recording, and that's too long, man. Especially when most of it was me being lost and choosing to go the wrong way. Skill swap, I don't know what that does either. What the heck? I mean, it's more of the same. Maybe you get a happier version of me this time. Who knows? The fishing fool versus Pokemon what? Did he call himself a fool? Hank. Zanunanoot. Nobody would ever know what Hank's Anunanoot means. We had a keyboard, my sister and I, we had a keyboard growing up. And it played a demo song that was like, Burr. Da -da -da -da. Burr. And that's all it kept doing on a loop. And we made up lyrics, Hank's Anunanoot, because our bus driver was named Hank. And he was kind of known to be cranky. He was the same guy that was like, from now on, wherever you sit, you sit there forever. Forever. Snorlax woke up in a grumpy rage. Last chance to catch the big dude. Level 30, just like the other one, although this one's a male. I think the other one was female. I can't remember. So you chomp the Tom Tom. And he flinches. Because who wouldn't? That sounds painful. Bring him on down and hope that he doesn't use rest. So I believe my strategy here was to go with Vile Plume because it was working kind of well. Acid was doing good and he can put him to sleep, or she. Vile Plume is a she. But yeah, he did the painful thing where he heals himself. And then the Chesto Perry. Weird that it's called Chesto when he's got such a big chest himself. Although I suppose your chest and your stomach are two different things. Yeah, acid does a pretty decent amount. So it was the same old struggle of like just hoping that he doesn't do that move and we get a chance to use sleep powder of our own because if he's in the yellow or red with the sleep condition he'll be easier to catch that's the idea here it's just waiting out the random chances and the dice rolls and actually he's still fast asleep so yeah I almost made the cut mistake again that Master Ball is in a terrible position. The Ultra Ball needs to be moved up the list. But it worked this time! We got Snorlax, who's actually a very good choice. You can add him to your party, and he'd be good with Hyper Beam and all kinds of stuff. 880 pounds of food. My god. So that guy actually blocks the way to something. 
Oh, it's Vermilion City music, so that's where this connects. This is the right path of Vermilion that we never actually did past Diglett's Cave. 30 species gives you the item finder. So now those underground tunnels, we can find stuff in them. Oh yeah. Not really necessary. Under normal conditions, I guess it would be better because you don't have infinite rare candies and don't have infinite money, basically, to buy things like PP up. But here's the last fisherman who gets the super rod. So now we can actually catch good stuff like crabbies and like, is, is he even good? I don't even know. But of course, we're not going to waste a whole episode doing that. This guy apparently wants to see a well-sized magic carp too. I don't know if it matters, like any magic carp could do. I forget what you get for that. I did read something about it, but I already forget. So I believe we do some fast forwarding here, maybe. Maybe not. I never know what to do against the Nidoran Nidorino people, which is what this person is. They're normal types, so this is when you would want them a chop or something. But who starts their party out with Machop? And why would you waste a turn switching when you could just as well... Use Surf and probably... Does that do it? Level 50 versus level 29? Yeah, that is definitely... Yeah, I boosted up the team a little bit here. Keeping in mind, we just got a badge that lets us have level 70s up to obeying, but we gotta be careful because the legendaries are only level 50. This guy's all Magikarp too, <laughs> so just fast forward and like chomp all the fish, I believe is the strategy here. I don't know what took him so long to fast forward, maybe because I really didn't know at the time that it was all Magikarp. But they seem to remember. Anyway. There's something in that grass. There's a whole reason why it's blocked off by a tree. I want to say Oddish. But I got really lucky here and didn't trigger anything but like one trainer by accident. Because yeah, the whole objective right now is to get to Cinnabar Island. And there's two ways you could go about it. But the one way is the way I went to first. And we're not ready for that. So yeah, we cut that one out because it was... He had a coughing. Or a couple of them or something. And all this path does, the whole reason was to get the super rod. Because it's kind of a waste of time dodging a lot of these trainers too. And anytime you see a couple like this, it's actually a fight with two Pokemon. But, uh, I didn't trigger any of that. Yeah, this connects to Fuchsia City, where the Safari Zone is. Just quite a long path. Probably only worth it for stuff like that, Rain Dance. I'm not sure what that does, it makes it rain. You have 50 species. Yeah, get experience share. I think I did. We had 51. Yeah, just enough. Experience share is very good. Especially under conditions where you don't have rare candies. Basically the non-cheating way of playing. So all of that, we really didn't have to do it. We could have started the episode here and went south. Which takes you to Seafoam Islands which connects to Cinnabar Island, and Seafoam Islands requires a Pokemon in your party with strength. And even though we have Dragonite, I think actually right here we'd fix that. Or either way, no, we have Vileplume. Yeah, I put Dragonite back in the box and put Vileplume back out because when you're progressing through the overworld, you need Cut in so many situations. And very rarely do you need Strength. 
so yeah, I thought, let's just head south here. I put the rappel on and everything to start avoiding all the fish, because now we can actually catch like tentacruel, horsey, crabby, stuff like that. Get some decent water types, I guess. So I went all the way to Seafoam Islands, only to realize I needed strength and couldn't do anything. But I did catch a Psyduck in there. And this was like 25 minutes of the video, was just roaming that place lost, picking up items. I did grab stuff, things like Ultra Balls and uh, like Max Revives or whatever I found in that place. But I ultimately had to escape rope out and then fly to Pallet Town, which is what we're doing right here. Right back to the beginning, and another option to get to Cinnabar is to just surf south of this place. But that's not the beginning of the painful, like, 25 minutes I needed to cut out. So somehow, I got really lucky avoiding these trainers, or maybe it's not as hard as you would think. It's just you never know when they're gonna pivot. That's what's so stupid about them. But the Pokemon Mansion is here on Cinnabar Island, right there, on the left. Cool place! This is where you would surf up and down and get the Missingo Cheat. And I believe this is where I first saw my friend Ryan playing it on the bus. He was on Cinnabar Island, or at least that's what I remember of it. So he was already almost done with the game when I saw him playing it and decided I wanted to get it too. So I think at this point I put Vile Plume away because now I realized I had already messed up with the strength thing. So Dragonite comes out now. And Seafoam Islands is where Articuno is, the first legendary bird and the one that's worth using in your party. Like Zapdos and Moltres aren't very good, I don't think. Zapdos could be. So the Pokemon Lab, I don't think I went in there first. Of course you check out the store first, and this one's very good. It's time to switch things up again, because it's got Ultra Balls for sale. I should have bought 99, I don't think I did. So we might remedy that next time. Because that's the best Pokeball besides the Master Ball. There's all kinds of like weird ones, like Net Balls are good for either fish or bug types. But I forget when we start seeing them. So yeah, the great balls, I just started getting rid of them. And that needs to be fixed. I think I do fix it right here. You'd never want Master Ball on the top in case you get finger trigger happy. Yeah, I was switching it now. So Master Ball is gonna be for Mewtwo, I'm thinking. But the legendary birds are gonna be a lot of hit and miss, so I definitely need to have 99 Ultra Balls if I could. Sorry for that audio hiccup. I don't know what it is about this emulator that does that, but yeah. So the gym is locked. We need to find a secret key, which is here in the Pokemon Mansion. And this place is crazy. You can catch fire types and like coughings and stuff. But I decided before that to check out the Pokemon Lab because I realized I thought this was the mansion at first. But this is the place where we trade in our fossils and get Kabutops, Aerodactyl, and if you had chosen the Helix Fossil, you, you would get a... Uh, Ammonite, or however you say it. And you can get a Tangela for a Venonat here traded, but there's no point in that because the grass up... right by Pallet Town where we first started sailing south, you can catch a Tangela there. And we already have a Venonat of our own. So you could have one of your own of both of those pretty easily. So that trade is stupid, I think. And I just forgot about this place, so I was visiting all the rooms. But only the final room is of any use. Deep had trouble too, apparently. Ponyta for a seal. You can catch a Ponyta in the next, uh, in the Pokemon Mansion. But we gave this guy the dome fossil first, which is Kabuto. Good thing he tells you right there. And he evolves into Kabutops, who looks really cool, but isn't really that effective. 
And there's a machine there for depositing your Pokemon because you need an empty slot to pick it up. But he says to come back. I forget. I think you could just kind of like leave and come back and it's ready. But we didn't decide to do that. We went to the Pokemon Mansion and ran into a coughing, which I cut out because I tried to catch it and it didn't work. I was too powerful for the coughing to weaken it. I could either kill it or fail at catching it. That's all I could do. So right there is where I cut it out. But this place is a doozy, man. I don't like it. I never did. Because I always forget what you gotta do. There's these random doors. That there's these Mewtwo switches that alternate the sets of the doors. So one path opens and another one closes and you have to figure out the thing. So that one let us get this item basically but closed off that other path I was in. The protein is good though. Just again, like you would never be able to buy them at the drugstore actually for 9,800 Poké Dollars. That's a ton. So even just buying one is stupid, if not for the infinite money. But the trick is kind of subtle here, the way of solving it, that I totally forgot and got lost for like another 20 minutes. And I did end up fighting all the trainers eventually because I didn't know if they had a secret. We gotta open that door, which I think we do in a second here. All these journals tell you about Mew. A new Pokemon discovered in the jungle. It's all about Mew. Which, remember the Mew under the truck thing? I still don't know if that's a real thing or if it's cheats only that do it. But I remember back in the day that whole rumor going around. To this day, I've never caught a Mew. I've never even seen it in this game. And I've never cheated it into my party, even. The only time I've ever seen it is in Pokemon Snap. And Stadium, I think you fight it in some situation. But alright, I think this is the solution right here. Hitting that switch, not twice, just once. Yeah, right here, you jump off of these ledges, and I didn't know that you could jump off of them, even though they're jagged and suspicious. So yeah, that was just a random fight. He had all electric types. Magnetite, Magneton, and Voltorb, I think, or Electrode. HP up is very good. But then I went back to the lab after being lost for 20 minutes. And we got our Kabuto. I think I put Dragonite back in the box and then swap them out here. Give him the old Amber, which turns into Aerodactyl, who's a very good fossil Pokemon, actually. I think so, although he's flying and maybe rock or something, so he's got some weaknesses. But then, yeah, eventually I found out you could jump off those edges, and now we're actually pretty close to being done with this place. But the reason it was over 40 minutes long of a recording is I also do the gym after this. Because I figured there was probably a way to cut it all down. And I think it did work out. It's just the same brief length as all the other ones. I don't know, I kind of like that they're a little bit more brief for this particular series. Because I think the nature of the game, it would get exhausting if they were hour-long episodes of Pokemon fights. So just a little bit each day, I think, is fine enough. Full restores, I think you can buy them in the Pokemon League. This guy, I don't know what he had. Garbage. That I fast-forwarded through. But this is the final room of the place. The whole point is to get the key to the gym that is locked. And TM14 Blizzard, you only get one. Unfortunately, you can't buy that one. So I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Like I said before, my Blastoise back in the day had Blizzard, but I don't think I would do that now. Especially when you can have Articuno have it instead. But there's the secret key that opens Blaine's gym. And this too, Solar Beam, a very good grass type move. So then I just left, went to the gym, there's an alternate exit to that place that's relatively nearby where I was, but 
I fumbled with that too. So this place, the gimmick is you gotta defeat every trainer that's by a door to open the door. And everybody's got fire types in here. So since it's very repetitive, I actually don't show everything. I cut out a lot of these trainer fights. So we see this one and then the leader himself, because they all pretty much have the same Pokemon. A version of Growlithe, Vulpix, and Ninetales. Vulpix is in Leaf Green which means it was also probably Pokemon Blue exclusive back in the day. But they did change some of those exclusives up. So anyway, I beat the last guy, and here's Blaine himself. The red-hot leader of Cinnabar's gym. No fast-forward here. At least I don't think. Just a legitimate fight, but we are beefed up pretty well for this. And our starter can wreck the whole team. But yeah, jumping up to level 50 as my baseline here for all my guys is quite uh, a little beefy for this point of the game. I should have caught a Ponyta, but I was so worried about the time of the recording and like what I was going to cut out, I didn't want to start grinding for random encounters. Plus, I think Growlithe is as good at, like, Arcanine, rather, at this point. That's all the fire type we need to get the game beaten. Catching all 150 is just pointless. But that Rapidash, I remember, can be kind of a pain if you're not ready for it. Or maybe it's the Arcanine that is his best one. They always save their best for last, so it's gotta be. Did this one shot it too? I can't remember. Yeah, it did. So, yeah, nothing to that guy. I said it again. Crap. I burned down to nothing. We got the volcano badge, which does not do an obedience thing, but it heightens the special stats of your Pokemon, so that's really good. Although I don't really know what the passive badge effect does. But now the game gets different. The whole reason I'm playing Fire Red and not just Red itself, which I have more nostalgia for, is because this graphically just is more accessible. It looks better. And, uh... But yeah, the problem is they change stuff up. Normally now you would go to the next gym and uh, catch all the legendaries and go to the plateau, but now this is brand new to the Fire Red Remaster. You see Bill again and he tells you about a whole new island called One Island. And I really don't want to do this stuff, but that's where they moved Moltres. And it's also needed later to catch Mewtwo. They moved Mewtwo. Or they made the requirements to get Mewtwo. You have to go to these islands. So it's a bunch of extra busy work that, you know me, I don't really like that, but I guess uh, we have to do it. But maybe next time we'll go to Articuno instead. We'll get Dragonite back in the party and do the strength stuff. But either way, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you then. Take care.